Recently, there have been a number of reports by journalists and popular science writers about the dangers of supplementing with fish oil. In this video, we're going to find out whether supplementing with fish oil can really be dangerous, and if so, why. But before we do, please subscribe to the channel, like the video if you haven't already, and comment on the video for the sake of the algorithm. Now let's get started. First of all, there are too many citations in this video for me to link them all here. So I've included a link to my blog, where there's a blog post that's a companion piece to this article. It's pretty easy to go through and to find the citations for every point that I mentioned there. First of all, the recently inordinate amount of articles written by journalists about the dangers of fish oil come from a recent meta-analysis that showed an increased risk of stroke from the use of supplemental fish oil. But this is not the beginning of the demonization of fish oil, really. Fish oil has long been demonized, originally because authors like Ray Peet believed that polyunsaturated fats are more likely to oxidize in the body. This is absolutely true. But they went so far as to say that supplementing with fish oil in a moderate amount, which of course, as you guys know, people supplement with fish oil at a maximum of 10 grams a day or so, considering your total fat intake, that's a small portion of your total fat intake. The rest could have been, if you're somebody like Ray Pete, coming from entirely saturated fats. Nonetheless, these people took the leap to say that supplementing with even three grams or five grams of fish oil presents such an oxidative stress to the body that it may offer a net negative impact on health. So there's both the stroke issue and the oxidation issue to deal with. In this review, we're mainly gonna talk about the oxidation. Regarding the stroke issue, to tell you briefly about it, there are varying meta-analyses that disagree with the recent meta-analysis about increased risk of stroke. And moreover, most importantly, supplementing with fish oil provides massive reductions in heart attack frequency among people with cardiovascular disease. This is most exemplified by the REDUCE-IT trial that used four grams of EPA in people who already had heart attacks, who were already on statins and found a 25% or so reduction in uh, mortality from heart attacks. But there are also many other meta-analyses. In my blog post, you'll see I've included a meta-analysis that actually uh, removes reduce it from its analysis and still finds massive reductions in heart attacks and other cardiovascular events. So this one uh, meta-analysis that found an increase in stroke uh, events, which by the way, actually, to be honest with you, there's a little bit of history about this. For example, the, the Inuits, uh, the natives of Greenland and Alaska and Canada, who ate a lot of fish, actually had high incidence of strokes. I was unable actually to find evidence of this when I was preparing my notes for this video, but I came across them before. So there may actually be an effect on strokes, but the effect on heart attacks is so major that it overwhelms any potential small negative Im impact on a minor cardiovascular issue. Not that strokes minor, but compared to cardiovascular mortality and heart attacks, it wanes in comparison. So we're not going to focus too much on this. You'll find some references in my blog post about that. Regarding cardiovascular disease, on the whole, in general, unless you're somebody only prone to strokes, in general, fish, supplementing with fish oil, particularly EPA, is known to reduce cardiovascular mortality. That's for sure. But what about this oxidation issue? This is a major topic. I get asked about it a lot because a lot of people follow Ray Peet, who who is generally a very lucid person and has great articles and so on, but he tends to take a contrarian view, which is popular in the world of nutrition because it's one of the best ways to get people to know about you. If you have a very unusual view, you'll be remembered. I'm not saying that's his motivation, but he has a lot of unusual views for one person. Keep in mind, Ray Pete is in his 90s, has lived a long and healthy life, so something is going right, whether it's his genetics or his lifestyle. With all that out of the way, let's get started and analyze this issue of oxidation of polyunsaturated fats, particularly supplemental fish oil. First of all, the oxidation of these kind of fats is called peroxidation, named after peroxide, which is a uh, first level byproduct of the oxidation of fats. The oxidation of unsaturated fats, like fish oil, can happen in storage, particularly when exposed to light and heat, during cooking, as well as inside our bodies, both when it's initially consumed, as well as later when it forms a fabric of our cell membranes. The oxidation of polyunsaturated fats produces two major concerning byproducts, which are aldehydic byproducts. For the N-3 unsaturated fats like fish oil, the major aldehydic byproduct is called HHE. For N-6 polyunsaturated fats, which we're not talking about here, the major end product is HNE. These both have longer chemical names which are arduous to pronounce, so we're just going to call them HHE and HNE from now on. 
So these are the two molecules that seem to be causing the most damage in our bodies when we oxidize fish oil. The question is, has it ever been shown in animals that when they consume more fish oil, they contain higher serum levels of HHE? The answer is yes. For the first time in 2012, in a rodent study, it was shown that when rodents were given oxidized fish oil, their plasma HHE level increased. And the same happened when they were given dietary HHE directly. So it, we knew from 2012 that this was possible. If you were already consuming oxidized fish oil, your levels of byproducts of this oxidation like HHE may increase. A rodent in vitro study also showed the same thing. They showed that consumption of beef as compared to fish oil produced lower serum levels of HHE. So these two studies showed that rodents could experience higher levels of, HH, of serum HHE if they consumed fish or oxidized fish oil. But what about humans? In humans, serum HHE levels, which are not very well studied by the way, seem to average around six nanomolar, but can increase to up to 17 nanomolar with people that have high uh, well, autoimmune conditions like arthritis, for example, high oxidative stress levels. A two week human study found that supplementing with DHA did not increase but remember, DHA is one of the components of fish oil with EPA, did not increase serum HHE levels at a dose up to 800 milligrams. But at 800 milligrams and north of that dose, which is what I'm consuming personally, and many of, a, many of us are consuming for the effects of fish oil, you have to actually use higher doses. Higher than 800 milligrams did increase serum HHE levels in humans. So in reviewing these three studies, we essentially know that it seems that supplementing with fish oil can increase oxidative stress markers by increasing the availability of this uh, highly detrimental genotoxic cytotoxic molecule that is HHE. The next question is, is already oxidized fish oil worse for people? Keep in mind, if you, take, if you consume unoxidized fish oil, so it hasn't oxidized during storage from heat or from light, you still can produce these reactive molecules in your body. But there may be more when it's already oxidized. It may be more harmful for the body. What research do we have to evidence this? Well, first of all, we have a study on pregnant rodents showing that pregnant rodents had higher mortality when they consumed oxidized fish oil as compared to when they didn't consume any kind of fish oil. And they had reduced mortality when they consumed unoxidized fish oil as compared to the control group. Also, a fascinating study on 54 subjects uh, over, se over a seven week period, supplementing with oxidized fish oil, unoxidized fish oil, or high oleic sunflower oil, which is, which is a polyunsaturated fat that could be oxidized easily in the body, found that interestingly, the people taking unoxidized fish oil had a 6% decrease in their LDL cholesterol. On the other hand, the people consuming high oleic sunflower oil had a 15% increase in their LDL cholesterol, and the people consuming oxidized fish oil had a 19% increase in their LDL cholesterol. So it seems that there is a serious danger in consuming oxidized fish oil, particularly already oxidized fish oil. The next question is whether the fish oil products on the market are already oxidized or not. To answer this question, we have some very interesting studies, large studies on fish oil products, some in Canada, in Australia, and in the US, also in Syria as well. But we're gonna review these three main ones first. What these studies did was test for a primary oxidation endpoint, which is peroxide, a secondary one in anisidine, and, a, and third, they tested the total oxidation value of the products. There are some governmental guidelines for how much these, the peroxide can be, the anisidine and so on. And they tended to use that to judge whether the fish oil products were obeying governmental laws or not. In general, all three studies found an average of around a third of the products failed the primary oxidation endpoint of peroxide. But there are some interesting uh, patterns that they found uh, while studying them. The first was that flavored products First, they thought that flavored products were oxidized more in earlier studies, but later they found out that the flavoring was throwing off the oxidation parameters in the studies. So it's not completely clear whether flavored products had higher oxidative stress parameters or not. They also found that the ethyl ester forms, including, for example, I mean, they didn't actually check it, but the pharmaceutical version of EPA is called Vasepa. It's an ethyl ester form itself. Ethyl ester forms are Basically how uh, manufacturers do this is that they have to purify the fish oil to get rid of mercury and so on. And when doing so, they put it in an ethyl ester form. Some uh, manufacturers then 
put the product back into a triglyceride form because it's more absorbable. Also, some manufacturers will sort of trick you, like Carlson, for example. They put some of it back into triglyceride form and some of it not, and they don't tell you how much they do. But anyway, the ones in uh, ethyl ester form that are not in, back in triglyceride form, which are generally lower quality products, tended to have more oxidative, uh, higher oxidative parameters. Also, krill oil products tended to have the least oxidative parameters in terms of the source of the oil. And not all encapsulated products fared worse than non-encapsulated products. Historically, it was thought that encapsulated fish oil would be more prone to oxidizing. This seemed to generally be true, but not across the board. Interestingly, some of these fish oil products added an antioxidant in the product, and the authors thought that the reason why was to reduce the oxidative stress to the fish oil or potentially neutralize some of it, and it did not always go well. In fact, a later study showed that adding tocopherols to fish oil did nothing to affect the oxidative stress of it. However, adding uh, the water-soluble version of vitamin E, which is called Trolox, did improve it, as, as did another antioxidant that was added in the study. So what does this all mean? Well, first of all, let's deal with this cardiovascular risk issue. To, to remind you guys, on a whole, really consistently, supplementing with high-dosed fish oil has been shown to reduce cardiac events. On average, even if you include the stroke events within the cardiac events, on average, it reduces cardiac events. And that's interesting, by the way, because a lot of these studies will have certainly used oxidized fish oil in them. And if not, they will have used normal fish oil, which was oxidized in the body, like Ray Pete says it was. But they still improved uh, mortality and cardiac events. So the first thing we know is that as a whole, fish oil is healthy for the cardiovascular system. The second thing we want to ask is, well, what Ray Pete, for example, has been saying is that even if the fish oil is not oxidized, it's going to oxidize in your body and present such a, uh, a difficulty for your body. Uh, for example, if, you know, the, the fish oil is held in cell membranes. So it's going to make all these cell membranes vulnerable to oxidative stress and so on. And Ray Pete would assert that it would offer a net negative effect. While this can't be shown in studies because the studies show such an overwhelming positive effect, it is interesting to consider whether having fish oil already being oxidized is worse than it not. And what we've seen from reviewing these studies is that clearly oxidized fish oil is way worse for your health than unoxidized fish oil. And in many studies, including the pregnant rodent study and in the LDL-C uh, study, you can see that having oxidized fish oil may be worse than having no fish oil at all. So uh, the concerns about the oxidation of fish oil I think are somewhat appropriate, but not once it's ingested in the body because we can see overall in the, in the studies there's a net positive effect. The question is just that whether we're getting oxidized fish oil or not. And unfortunately, this is a little bit hard to study. Third-party reviewers of fish oil companies don't tend to study uh, oxidative parameters in the fish oil. With that said, you can be quite safe when you choose a triglyceride form fish oil that's in liquid form in a dark bottle. So for example, I use Nordic Naturals. I actually you often use the Spring Valley brand from Walmart, but the, whether that brand is oxidized or not becomes a question. I, I started to become suspicious after looking into the research. So to conclude, fish oil consumption as a whole produces a net positive benefit in people. But with that said, if the fish oil is already oxidized, it may in certain scenarios pr produce a net negative effect that's worse than even not supplementing with fish oil in the first place. To avoid that, you can use a triglyceride form fish oil in liquid form, ideally without a flavor, although many have flavors. For example, I use the Nordic Naturals liquid form of EPA and DHA. Anyway guys, I hope this was helpful for you. Let me know if you have any questions below and I'll see you next time.